found him. Uh, so he was actually in this packet here. So we're gonna be able to get him. Probably gonna loop here. But you know what? Instead, of, since we know that this guy, we can actually tighten this from the inside and hold the thread in like this. Other than this guy here, we couldn't um, because we couldn't hold his thread. I don't think we can. Let's see. If we could have done the same. No, we can't because he's blocked off. Let's cut this tie strap and see how well this guy actually did with the silicone. Supposedly, it's been on there for whatever. So the silicone shit got a little bit hardened. So we're going to go ahead and cut the tie strap off of this guy. And let's see how the silicone treated him. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a little clean um, vacuum. As I always get paranoid with dirt being stuck and trapped in there. We've got all this little dirt debris and we'll get the shop back real quick to it. But before we even do that, let's go ahead and get this guy broken out. It says we haven't cut him since we last tie strapped him on there. So here we go. One, two, three. The cutting at the tie. All right, pull it down outward. And now he's got another one here. We had to manipulate the, the tie strap to get it where we want it to loop it. All right, let's see how well. Oh yeah, he did pretty good. He stayed on there. Look at that. So he's gonna be okay on his own. Okay, get all these little nasty, uh, we call them the build up. I mean, it's not gonna hurt or anything to stay on there, but kind of like to have it clean, you know? Leftover gunk from the silicone. All right, we won't peel this off yet until we're really ready to release everything. But anyway, guys, tie strap off. Let's go and get the shop back real quick and try to suck off all the little debris and dust here. Even though before our work is finished, I know we still got to get this guy straightened out. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and connect the tail lights for this guy here. Unfortunately, they come only in yellow or amber color, but we're going to connect it here. That way we'll even treat it like a signal light. So not just a reflector, but also a signal light. So I think that's going to work cool. So the only brake light we really have is this guy here. And that's the main one. And then also a Gibby, of course. So let's do this. Uh, let's get the shop back. Connect it to the hose. Just clean up a little bit of our area, our work area here. So we know where we're at. I got it back organized now. I kind of like the things the way they are. So easier to continue your work when your workplace is kind of neatly organized, right? And we got our heat shrink ready to go because we're probably going to do more heat shrink on this guy or even clamp, not even solder on this because I think those clamps work really well. Let me go and plug this guy in here. All right. Let's go and get his connecting hose. And let's suck away. go yeah a few things I could have done better but <laughs> I'm really pleased with our our brake results here look at that beautiful isn't it and that's already at the four level too so at the sixth level would have been even higher up like this look at this so we'll leave it at the four level look at that beautiful grip also mounted this back on just loosely just to keep them from falling over where we can test and start them a kill switch is on in this position. Kill switch is on either way. So we gotta turn this on here and then hit the button. So our kill switch is right there. The little dot button. That's pretty much our kill switch modified. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one.
the wheel top off, just to make sure. I think I might cut the short holes again. We also have to connect our breather hole here onto the crankcase uh, while the pretty much our breather hole for our transmission uh, gear oil. So we'll we'll probably put that guy in there. This guy right here. So a few things we could do. Those are just little add-on touches. There we go. We got him right here. So we might install that as well. So this is it. We're finally getting down. We won't actually JB weld this until the very end after we put the little clamshell harness on there. Then we'll JB weld it. Oh, here we go. Okay, hi. That's about hi, hi, Paul. Oh, lucky you. Got no crow. My land is my All right, so I can't wait. I'm going to be able to put the scooter outside now with this little tough line to protect it from fading. So we're going to test this out. Let's see how it goes. I'm taking a chance here. I'm going to put it on the bra. Open. Put the cover on there and see if actually rain actually got through. It's better to know now than later, right? Well, maybe later would be better, but I always like to say no now. So we'll do that as well. So in the meantime, let's tap those little reflector lights, shall we? Just kind of spin it over like this. break them, you then. Throw the with tongue. Love it down here, I like it. Okay, let's do this one. Let's see how we're gonna run this wire here. Uh, we might just cut this license plate out, it's just dangling everywhere. Oh, by the way, I got a new one coming. It's the March 2019, it says 2020, because I just paid it. So hopefully, the sticker gets in here. It's probably in the, it's in the in mailbox shortly. So, there we go. So, perfect timing, right? It's gonna be real, we'll ride our scooter. These guys are left in place. I don't know if this has anything to do with it. In fact, this might have been able to be mounted last, so we don't have to worry. But I think we still need to get on there somewhat. So let's go and open this guy up and let's get the socket drive him out. It's 10 millimeter socket. Let's see if we can find the socket driver for it. Eight millimeter. A 10 millimeter. Um, this might be a 10 we're looking for. No, it's eight. You know, when we look, look for 10, we find a bunch of eight. When we look for eight, we find a bunch of 10. That's how it always works. So let me try it. I think it's right in here. Where a new little tweezer tool there. There's a 10 millimeter. Now we need a little socket driver for him. There it goes. All right, so we gotta be careful tightening this guy down here. Remember last time it just twist and broke off. So this is gonna take a little bit of time to do this part, but I think it'll be cool to have it. It's mainly for, well, I think it's for safety too, but being the aesthetic, not mandatory, but that we broke. Oh, hopefully it doesn't just broke off the thread. That's what I'm afraid of. Don't tell me the thread's coming off with it. Okay, good. I want to make sure that thread doesn't come off with it. There they are, just feeding through the loop. One down. We'll save these guys here as a backup. Like we always do with our unused stuff. Put this over here for a second. Take this out, guy out, 10 millimeter. There we go. Lefty Lucy. We need to keep these guys here. Shouldn't be too hard to tap. There it goes. Here's our second reflector. 
The reason why I changed the first one was it was getting kind of foggy up. So now let's go and put this one. Now we'll have even signal rears um, in addition to our other rear. So we got quite a bit of light set up. So let's go and put this guy in there. Oh. These guys are just look a little bit much lighter. Oh, they look like they improved a little bit. They put the silicone just to make sure the wires doesn't rip off easily. This guy's own little nut there, but we'll use our little nut here. Let's go and put these guys back in place. This has a flange nut, so I kind of like the flange one versus just the regular nut. In fact, unless we do two of them, huh? We'll use this one to compress. Maybe this was for, you're supposed to keep the nut on here, but then you go and, you know, go on behind here like this. So that means the pressure is being squeezed on this versus the raw. But then again, this won't go flush to the fat, the surface. That's a problem. So watch, for instance. I see what you're saying, but it will protect it though. See that? It won't flush it all the way. Which in this case, I don't know. A gap might be okay, I guess. Now we take it off. We just gotta make sure we don't do it too tight, because it will strip this nut. I mean, it'll, it'll strip this from the harness. So let's see. This one, see, that'll flush a little bit more. Now we can decide how did it go last time, see if we can bring the cable wires. Or we can smash the cable wires. Probably not. We could probably go like this. Keep the cable wires intact, or up top, and then run it down. We could do it this way. Okay, let's go ahead and put our flange. It has three wires, I believe, each one. So it can work as a pulse too. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, it's gonna bright amber, right? So it's no point of having it as a brake light. So we're probably gonna use it just pretty much, probably just gonna use the blue, I'm sorry, we're probably just gonna use the black and blue wire. I think the third wire is a, a pulse wire. You probably wanna do it by hand too, by the way. If it feels like any more, you could strip it. I'll take the socket and do it by hand. There we go. There you go, see that? I feel it already anymore, it's probably gonna crack. Uh, there you go, that's good enough. That's it, we got one. Let's get the other side. <laughs> A little uh, tie strap here. It's pretty strong compared to the wires. Okay, let's do this guy too as well. Just do them by hand. See, it doesn't look too bad, right? And we'll try to hide the wires neatly. How we'll figure it out soon enough. We won't unmask the tape yet until we're done. There we go. All right, so there we go. Get this guy. Wait, we're supposed to put him in the bar first. Oh no, this is it. This is where he's going, I believe. Okay. Done yet though. Let me go and tighten this guy. Which one was it? The one I haven't tightened yet. Okay, this tightened already. This guy hasn't been. Now he's tightened. Oh, this guy hasn't been tightened. Okay, now he's tightened. Okay, so we got these guys tightened. Might be better to put a blue lock tight that way, vibration. I know it will vibrate. So let me go and just back up a little bit, put a little blue Loctite on that bad boy. Keep the vibration on, keep him rolling. Okay, so I'm gonna just put some blue Loctite, a little droplet near the area of thread that we need to go.
see if blue loctite will do it. There you go. This guy has make his way around in there. There he is. He fall into my trap. There we go. Squeeze it out from the other end as well. Just hand tighten it. There we go. That one's good. Keep the vibration. We're just vibrating them off. All right. Next one here. Back them up. Oh, don't want to squeeze. Get yeah, fall into a thread, buddy. Can't have you just fall wherever you want to. <laughs> there he is. Look at him. Oh darn it! This guy's not doing what we want him to do. It. There we go. All right, plenty now. Also, he's coming out quite a bit here too. I don't know why. It's kind of wasteful. Let's go ahead and move this guy to where he should be. Bye, Paul. Uh, bye. Bye, bye. Piata messenger. Yeah, you judge my. Ma. Yeah, uh, I help with the messenger program. No, no. And that Tony, the Tony, right? Okay, that one's done. Call the bar, get the crowd, get the back knee. Okay, bye, mother. Okay, so there we go. All right, so we got this here. Trying to figure out how it's gonna sit. I think it sits downward like this, upward like this might be a. I don't know. Either one. Does it really matter to us right now? Let's see. Which one looks cooler? Having it downward like this? Or upward like this? I think upward looks funky, huh? Ouch. I don't want to drag the wires. I think downward. So it's downward. Ouch. Downward's right. So it's going to go downward like that. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten it again. Make sure. Oh, oh, you can't see it. Tightening it up, finishing them up. It's gonna look awesome once it get on there. No, I haven't had breakfast nor lunch yet, so I think I'm about due for some. I don't know where to go eat, I'm debating. I really like that grilled chicken taco at that Mexican restaurant. Oh, that was good. All they did was just put their famous grilled chicken. You know, it's not flame boiled, it's just really grilled chicken. Like morsels of chopped chicken. I think they used a little bit of thigh meat with the breast meat. And that was it. And pico de gallo, which is, you know, chopped onions, peppers, and cilantro or whatever. It's like a salsa. And it was just hearty. It gave me a lot of energy. It didn't have any rice or beans. I did add guacamole, but I think guacamole didn't do much to it already. It was so tasty already. I think guacamole just made the burrito more cooler or colder. Cold temperature. So I figured maybe this time I'll just order as it is, a regular burrito, because it actually was really tasty. I didn't know it's like guacamole in there. <laughs> so, all right, so let's go ahead and clean this guy out a little bit from all the ex exposed Loctite. Loctite's not gonna work if you have it outside the thread, so there's no point of thinking that you're doing it a favor by putting Loctite up outside the thread. So let's go and clean this guy. Use a little dirty shop rag here. Can handle it. All right, now it's time to. I know these wires are intimidating here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna separate the wires, of course. And first of all, let's go and test these wires out to make sure they even light up. So we're gonna go for the black and red, positive and negative. That's simple as it is. We're just gonna connect it to our battery. You guys can see here in a second. 
Okay, so put this guy down for a second. Okay, so um, I don't know if I can really crisscross him. I think it doesn't really matter. I think lights are lights, right? But let's just keep the positive and negative as, as one. Okay, so here we go. Well, I said I was going to keep it as one and look at me. I did the opposite of what I said. Okay, let's see if he lights up. First of all, we want to test him before we do all this. Should have did it before we actually took out the package. There you go. Lights up. See underneath. Bring him up a little higher there. Perfect. That's the other side. Same way, same wire setup. I want to make sure we'll hold the black and red wire responsible. Okay. Get them on par with us. Okay, let's do it. There we go. That works as well. So these wires are all good. They're all good in the neighborhood. Okay, now it's a matter of tapping the wires and how we're gonna route them. So we're gonna get started and actually probably closing up our back panel. I don't think there's anything here else we need to configure, right? We're good. Uh, this part we can cut out as we go, so that's not a problem there. As long as we don't put the, the back panel, it should be easy to cut, snap them up, and uh, make them a little bit lesser. I know it's going to be hard to pull out, that's for sure. It's almost, yeah, when you cut it, that's it. It's just hard to pull out. So if I snap them right now, should we mess with them right now? Part of me say no, part of me said, like, ah, let's do it. All right, so he seems to be hanging out like that, right? So we cut another, I don't know, to get rid of him. Cut him right here, maybe. Bring him in closer. No going back now. One, two, three. Yeah, no going back. We pinched him already. I wish I had a good... <laughs> oh, wow. These guys are strong. Uh, not strong enough for these guys here, though. Where was those? Where was our cutter though? That's not really our cutter. The other guy was our cutter. Here. Not strong enough for this guy here. All right, let's get back to where he was cut it. Look at that. He cuts him like he was pretty much nothing. Okay, let's go and dry this guy out. So we gotta get a pair of pliers. I'm not even sure this is even short enough, but we'll find out. Do we have the pliers here? Or we put it back, all our needle nose. There we go, needle nose plier. Yeah, this one's a pain in the butt to get, to get off. Uh, get on wasn't too bad. that more than likely we have to splice them gotta be careful doing this though I didn't want to do it this way reason why is if you create a groove in there deep enough it's gonna be permanent Okay, so what I'm gonna do is try to pinch them, split them open. Oh. Look at that. Yeah, you're gonna have to damage them to get them off. Unbelievable, huh? This is probably where compressed air comes into play. <laughs> Since we don't have that hook on yet. This is where we come into play. It's got a nice rubberized coat to him. Horrible. Horrible. I want to 
create too much uneven crease mark. Almost got incision amount. These holes are durable. There we go. Holy smoke. There we go. Let's go and smooth out the edges. From our damage there. Now we're gonna see first before we even lock him in. I think he's about good now. See that? He's laying low for us. All right, so once we squeeze him in, that's it too. Like, let's put this little clamper in him now. Should have got you know, those plier back for him. Okay, once we squeeze him in, then we'll put him toward. Now, how are we going to do this? See, going in, he's not a problem at all. It's getting him back off. That's when he has an attitude. See, there you go. At least we know he's secured in there. All right, let's get this clamper over. Hey, he doesn't even need it, but just to make sure. Yeah, he doesn't even need that clamper. <laughs> My little charger magnet there keeps falling. And what I do is want to pinch it downward just in case any sharp edges might interfere. Just directly to the side. Maybe it goes the other way. I don't want the sharp edge to really poke the metal. So I'd rather have the flat, flush surface. There we go. This is good. So there we go. We took care of our looping issue there. Now he's not all high and mighty anymore. Hopefully he'll still actually sit down properly when we close our everything else. But I think he will. Should be no reason to. So there we go. We eliminated a little bit less tubing on him. But yeah, these guys are strong. It's a pain in the butt to change this, I'll be honest with you on that one if we ever need to. And let's go and get our, what do you call it? I heard this one was a hard challenge too as well to put on. So let's see if we can do it now. And then it's funny because it does have the screw holes where we can mount them here. So I think APM did a great job in utilizing that screw hole there. And we'll probably do the same style as APM because he's cool like that. APM scootering. Uh, we pretty much copy them on the Banjing clutch as well as... It's funny because we order the same thing uh, from NCY store and we utilize it. <laughs> Without us knowing it. Well, the Shrey battery he got elsewhere, but NCY store has the Shrey battery too. And I got the Shrey battery not knowing that he also had the Shrey battery. So it was so coincidental. We almost think alike. Except for he's Italian, I'm Cambodian. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. I'm going to open this guy up. And we're going to install our breather holes. This is the part number here. UP121. You guys want to see it on the website. This is the one that's actually, I guess you... I guess push in or push under or push inside. I know it's going to be a pain in the butt, but we'll figure it out. It's really nice. Look at the quality of that. It comes with a little tie strap, the small one, like always recommended. And it comes with these guys here, which I think is too big. We'll probably install, oh yeah, way too big. If anything, we'll use one of our, um, uh, I probably won't even need it, to be honest with you. We're just going to use a tie strap for it. And then if we get it right, I guess. How are we going to angle this to mount this way? It would be interesting, right? Can't go like this. No, it can't. This might need to bend a little bit for us. But either way, it's going to be funky. It's going to be kind of funky. <laughs> so we'll probably have a tie strap like right there or something. And this guy goes down. See what I mean? Okay, so now it's pushing him onto this little brittle hose. That, oh my gosh. Imagine getting this little guy into this one. There's probably almost... I say no way, really. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't even want to fit in there. Holy smoke. I mean, if it's just a little bit of wedge, but you might almost have to 
really like heat this guy up or somebody put him in warm water to absorb him or something. But that doesn't look easy to feed at all. Holy smoke, look how thin this hole is. They're about to poke him in here. I mean, I wish there was a little sort of, um, I mean, we could try it. I mean, we can wedge it a little bit until it gets bigger for us maybe. And then see if we can actually poke him in there, but that sure is quite something. You know, once you get him in there, you're good. I wish it, this is as small as it comes in, you guys. So it's not gonna get smaller for us, unfortunately. But yeah, I would love for this guy to stretch open big enough so we can fit this guy in there, but I'm not seeing it right now. <laughs> it's a little intimidating here. Look how small this hole is. And I mean, this guy could probably fit into him inside, really, but he's actually supposed to push, push inside. So we definitely gotta stretch him out somehow. So let's see if we can do a pre-stretch on him. Maybe. I don't know. If not, we'll have to tackle him at a later time because he's more in the exterior. So let me see if I can stretch him real quickly. If I can't, we'll just tackle him at a later time. Just gotta find something and cram him in there. I think this is it. It's a little rod there, right? Expandable. But the only problem is though, once you pull him out, it's gonna go back to where it's not expandable. Look at that, he's already starting to break a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, it might not be a good idea yet. So we need, probably need a new crankcase hose. So, yeah, it might not be a good idea. So we'll leave him alone for right now. He's not gonna do anything to us. He was actually probably like right here or something like that. I don't think he drips on the belt. But in case he does drip on the belt, let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and tie strap. I'd rather have them drip like this downward, right? Against the belt. So I'll use this little tie strap still. That way he doesn't just drip on the belt for no reason. Okay. Let's see. Can it bend like this? I want to make sure it bends okay. I don't want him to drip onto the CVT cover, that's what I'm trying to say. So I think maybe this will probably be the best thing I could do for him right now. Have him tied like right there. Okay, let me go get something and cut the tie strap on him. I know it looks kind of cheesy and ugly. But it's better than having him drip elsewhere. Put them in there, I don't know. Oh, he could be free out like this. It's just like a crankcase for the 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 um, gears. Maybe the next one we order will be a little bit more flexible when we actually change, um, when we actually ever open this guy up again. I'm not looking forward to opening the transmission gear for no reason. Uh, that's only to change gear ratio. So let me just go ahead and leave this the way it is right here. Let me get something to tighten it much a little bit more. Hope that this, these shocks here are not rubbing them too bad. No, they're not. They're a little rounded. So when they flex, they're not going to go crazy on them. Okay, let's go cut him out. Alright, so we're going to pull a little bit. There we go. That's it. All right, so we'll leave them like that. Doesn't look too shabby, huh? We can put the breather right now because I would think if you, even if I could expand them, it looked like he was about to break. So when we change out the little um, transmission crankcase ventilation there, We'll go ahead and look into installing this guy on there. But for right now, he's okay. I don't think there's not much fluid coming out of that in any way. I've never seen it. But I could be wrong. Uh, APM mentioned there's quite a bit of fluid coming out of there. But I just really haven't seen it in my own eyes yet. So we'll find out on that soon enough again. 
in the meantime, let's get an idea how we're gonna actually route these wires in and out. I might wanna maybe take a little break, go for some lunch. Because you never wanna rush things when you're in a fatigue moment. You wanna enjoy it, so you don't wanna push your limits. So I'm probably just gonna do a, a quick layout how we're gonna actually probably install it. So again, we agreed on, looks so much cooler angled downward, right? Like this step upward like that I don't know it looks either way to be honest with you but we can do it anyway too so it's not matters I think kind of going curving down like this looks more ideal it's gonna go underneath here and we're gonna need to tap our wires so we're gonna put it here and before we can put it there unfortunately we actually have to put this guy into the main frame first but we can get an idea how he's going to route himself. And then maybe we can just yank this down when we put the mainframe on there. That could be a possibility there. So let's go ahead and while we're going to route this wires from behind the scenes. We're going to go in through these holes. I mean, we just got to be really careful we do it that route. Or, I mean, we could go that route. Or we can expand it a little bit. Maybe, maybe you know, make a little hole in here. Just a little bit of hole. A, a separate hole. That way, because I don't really want to get the screw. Just in case the screw get caught and grind all the wires together. That's what I'm afraid of. So we can make a little small hole. We'll make a little small hole separate for these guys to come in. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll make a little small hole. This shouldn't be hard to drill a what? quick... But, uh, you play guy. Yeah. But, but beat up a lot. Uh, uh, green and uh, winner. Green, you're done wrong. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to drill a little small hole, these two right here, real quick. Take a little trusted build drill bit. And we're probably not going to drill the hole on our uh, thing yet because we're not sure if we're going to actually keep, keep the little strap bar. I'm thinking we are, but I just want to double check to make sure. Okay, we're just, where's our little drill hole? We can use this one. Just a little small drill. Okay, there we go. This is probably enough to bring three wires in cleanly. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna just drill it. I guess we could drill one each side or we can just go I mean, we don't have to do one each side, to be honest with you. It's kind of pointless. Um, just want to see which way is best. But it will keep the wires separated for us. We can do one each side. I mean, or just do one, one hole only and feed it all in there. Let it just route the middle. If we do it here, we might create a little bit weaker point there. Let's see. Should we go for it? Just somewhere in the middle. Can't go wrong, right? It's gonna be covered up anyway with the bar frame. So we can just do one middle one. We don't definitely don't want to go in there and here like this. That's way too much weight. Or we can even tap it to the side like these guys right here. Create a little side slot for them. I mean, we could do that. Help protect the wires, but then again, if the wires come up to the center here, it's gonna get eaten again. So we're back to square one. I mean, we could create independent holes. Just... Okay, let's see how these wires are gonna go. We can only drill one, so we might as well think it, think it over, think it over. This will be there. This will be, I think this guys will be covered here. So this guys will be covered there. I'm thinking, do we even have to drill? What if we just throw the wires over? Like, you know what I mean? Just throw it over, like right there. And just have it tucked. Why drill, right? We can just, here, I'll just show you guys what I mean. Just throw it over the loop like this. Just have it go over like that. 
That way it's not locked into anything. What do you guys think? Of course, these guys will be over on top. Yeah, we can just throw it over the loop. But then you're gonna expose a little bit more wire instead of running it neatly. Like, you know what I mean? Instead of running it neatly like right here or something. So we are gonna drill the hole. I think it might be best to drill the hole outside before it goes to the center. Cause it's kinda of come up meet these guys. So we are gonna drill the hole. It'll be more toward the side than the center. Oh sorry. Okay, so we are gonna drill the hole, then we might want to drill it maybe on the side of it. Not toward the inside. Or we can drill one big one in here and feed the wires in there and then pull it instead of having two separate holes, you know? Just debating. We really want to go near as possible to those switches. Two separate holes, or one hole centered there, and have the wires tee off to his appropriate body there. One center hole or two wires. We can always get rid of one center hole, but two holes, that might be whack. So let's go and do one center hole. we will have to meet here in the middle. Okay, I think this is a... This is pretty much center as it is. Oh man, this thing is, this thing is. I go a little slow. <laughs> I don't have to center punch no more, so. Oh, actually, you know what? This guy looks like he has a lot of beef in him. So I have to go a little bit lower. This way, right here. We're going back. Pretty thick. Oh. There we go. <laughs> That's just the purpose of us not having to worry about the wires being, um, you know, threaded killed. So you can see it's pretty centered. Not bad, it was really more careful. Um, let's go ahead and do this now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the wires in first and then we're gonna prepare to where it's gonna bolt at. So we gotta run all our wires. Hopefully I can squeeze them all in there. If not, we can expand the hole a little bit. Remember we gotta get six wires total in there. <laughs> Uh, comfortably let's say we can do one at a time that's no big deal and we can pull it it's not like we have to or we can do two whatever can fit in there at a time and then we can pull the third one in there and then we'll start the other three sets same center hole slot all right okay see there barely fits three yeah barely fits three but we'll force it in there all right, see, this is the first lefty run right here. We'll bring it out here just to drag it. Okay, we're going to be tapping our wires shortly enough. Don't want it too big of a hole. I think I want to utilize it to our advantage here of trying to um, maybe even put silicone in that dap there and hold the wires together. All right, so let's squeeze one wire at a time because I don't think there's any room for us at all to get the whole three at the same time. So either one, we'll do the blue one first, since it's right there. Okay, let's see if he will even come out for us. Oh, barely. There we go, I got him through. All right, next one, the red one. Let's see if he will squeeze out for us. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to expand the hole a little bit. That's no problem. 
I'll just expand it. But they are tight squeezed by themselves. Let me see if I can have them ride in there with the blue one. Let's see if the blue ones, if I pull them, he'll yank the other wires with them. Let's see if he'll do it. No. Oh, shoot. Maybe. Holy smoke. I kind of, kind of let the wire... No, he didn't do it. <laughs> I thought he would have. All right, let's expand the hole. But at least we know we can get the maximum of four in there. Um... Now we all we really need is four in there. You remember what happened, right? The the bl blue wire is not something we can use, but I don't want to cut it out either. Because I don't know, somewhere along the line we will use them. So let's just expand the hole. expanded it not sure let's try to find out take our first set here should go in pretty easy if it can fit four it could be able to fit three okay Let's take our other set of three. I'm gonna have to do one at a time now. But it should fit this guy okay. There you go, he's in okay. Okay, let's get our fifth one, and then our sixth one, and then we're done. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Darn it, still too darn small. I thought we stretched them out a little bit for us. Maybe I gotta give him an angle. Unbelievable. I think we got him in. Yeah. There we go. All right, just just one more, okay? I just need well, you get one more in there. And we're done. We are good. We are good together. There's the black one. There's, we'll separate them once we get them on in there. There you go. Look, I think I can squeeze them right here in the middle. See, they look like a big opening right here in the middle for them. Okay, let's see if I get these wires to pinch them in together. Together, together. There you go. I think he's in. All right, I think we got them all in there. So there we go. We got them all into that little small hole there we made. Didn't do too, too much damage. All right, so let's see here now. Put this guy in for a second. Let's go underneath. There it goes. I think this is the last red wire, blue wire. Oh, here's the red wire. That's the last one right there. Wow, it's tight. Almost can't barely pull them out. Gonna okay, need the needle on those pliers to get a little bit more finger muscle. Wow, that is really tight, which is good for us. That way it relieves the pressure from these guys being yanked in the connector in. You see him right there? Just pop his little head out a little bit only. Just aiming for him only. There we go, see, pull them out. Kind of like sewing. <laughs> it feels like that. Okay, so we got these guys here. And now we're gonna go prepare to tap them. How are we gonna tap them and how are we gonna do it? So I'm gonna put them up top a little bit. Okay, so if we tap them, we might as well cut off the slack now because then we're gonna have a messy bunch of wires here. So let's see how we're gonna do it cleanly. First of all, let me pull all the wires that I can. Let's set the slack level where he could easily be, and then we're gonna take a break, head out for lunch. We need to also recharge our batteries.
Okay. So I know we can pull him in way much more than what he has currently. So I'm gonna try to pull all in bundle. Look at that. And I can pull one by one. His strength is in the groups. Now eventually I have to pull them all the way in anyway, so let's see here. It's not gonna want to go anywhere, right? Okay, I'm gonna have to pull it all the way in. Because this from here it's there we go. Create more of a problem for us now. I, I create a lock here. <laughs> now I gotta get these guys off. Alright. Okay, get them out. Alright, there we go. Got them out. It's gotta be pulled evenly. Alright, so we got this one here, so we're gonna go in a little bit more evenly. So I'm gonna pull. And I gotta pull more this side here, which I can't really feel or know. I'll just have to tug and see where it's pulling. Nope. That. Nope, not this guy anymore. Bring him some slack out back. These guys here, they need to be pulled. But there's no way of telling them. Let me see if I can find one. There we go. Found the black one. See if we gotta find one of the red ones. Nope. There we go. Not right one. Find the blue ones. There we go. Alright. Are they almost pulled evenly yet? Don't know which one is which and which side is which, that's the problem. Because yeah, they're all ambushed here on their own. So I gotta do a little by little. Okay, there it goes. There's one blue one here. Just try to pull it evenly. Let's get all the blue wires evenly. Oh man, no, 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 no. Don't want to don't put too much pressure. The reason why I forgot that we actually have to curve around here as well. So we do need to bring these guys out a little bit. Okay, we gotta bring this guy out a little bit. Okay. The reason why they have to go around underneath this guy perfectly, remember? All right, and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll leap the way it is, like here with a lot of slack, and then when we bolt them on, then we can go ahead and configure our slack level. So the bolt on will be eventually happening as soon as we get the front bolts on. So this is probably where we'll be bolting it on as soon as we get the other guy low on. So instead of me having him hang loose like this, let me go and take this guy's thread out and just pry bolt him on now. That will have something hang on. I got washers here, I got washers there. And then we'll go for our lunch break. Glad you guys agree. Okay. It's not bad. We don't like it. I think still it's still quite clamped down. I think it still allows to clamp down. I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, it is a bushel of wires, but it's plastic too, so it's not like this could be hard to clamp down or anything like that. Okay, so we'll get these wires here. Uh, let's have a washer on there. Let's try to get a washer on there. Okay, let's get one in there. Just put it on loosely. Not too loose, we gotta get, get on there. Okay, the next one. It's got the washer there. It's so short. We 
gonna do is just gonna pre-install this so we can actually tap the wires, see how it's gonna go first. And then we're gonna pull the wires, which uh, pulling might be a different story. We do want the, the slack. But we definitely don't want wires to expose like this. This is just really ridiculous, right? So we'll start pulling the wires in and we'll start feeding it correctly where it needs to be fed. We should actually put from the top because now the wire hangs down. We should go from the top of the bolts. That's what we should have done. So let's see. It's not too late. Let's just undo this real quick. Move the wires to the top one at a time while the other one's holding. Pull it out for a second. Make sure the wires are not being pinched by the screws. Just move them away from the screws, that's what I'm trying to do. And we'll do the other ones too. We can still pull it, I believe. It's gonna be a little bit hard to pull, actually. Just wanna have enough slack. See if I can pull it from one end first. Yeah, I can pull three at a time. The thing about it is I don't know which three wires are from the left or the right. Oh, oh that's another thing we gotta figure out too. Oh darn. Uh, we didn't label it so it's really hard to tell. We gotta label which one is coming from the right side, which one is coming from the left side, because it's very critical. Uh, unless we test for continuity or some sort. Or we could tug it. So we'll have to come back here and we'll do a tug test and everything. So let's just go and put the screw for now. But we will come back and do a tug test. I forgot about the whole deal. Um, because we do have to label it quite a bit. Uh, we'll put right, right, or left, left. We should have done that before we put it in there. But I didn't think about it until now. So we have to know which set of three wires are for the left, which set of three wires for the right. I mean, over here is fine, but when you get an insight, you'll see it all comes down to this little one, one center bushel, right? And that's not gonna work. There you go, I'll just put it in for now. So we go to lunch. All right, buddy, I don't want to work on you when you're fatigued like this. We got to work on you when we're happy, excited, and full, full of grilled chicken. I'm thinking I'm probably going to go for that grilled chicken. Or maybe Jack in the Box, you know, grilled chicken sandwich. I mean, uh, chicken sandwich, that's still to be my favorite still all time. And we'll, we'll come back and we'll, we'll go ahead and separate the three with a three or else look at this. See, it's not even an odd, even number. So we'll come back and we'll take care of that guy. We're back, we're gonna go and continue on. Just had Jack in the Box, big chicken sandwich, really delicious. So now let's go and start back. I'm thinking how we can actually mark them is drag them out a little bit and then put a little, I guess we can designate the left one to have the markings on the wires, each three of them, right? So let's do that, let's pull them all out. So I think we got the socket in there. Let's see how our solder went on this guy here. It wasn't too bad, huh? Once we get them in there, we should be fine. We shouldn't be moving them around a lot. That's what I'm hoping anyway. These guys here, we're gonna tap these wires. And we can even make them, I guess the, the purple wires are like sort of our running light wires, so we can probably even use that to tap. Um, I guess maybe the purple one, the same as the blue wire. Actually, this blue wire is purple wire. What am I saying? <laughs> so we can might even use that as a running light, so maybe it'll just stay on and then it gets a burst of brighterness. I don't know yet, but we'll find out. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get these guys off of here for a second. Got a little bit more energy. Once you get a little food in you, it takes about 10 minutes to metabolize it, turn it into energy. That's why you usually get full register when you're... I got a new, speaking of energy and power bank, I got the small one on there, even though it's kind of like medium charge, not even the full green light, however, but it's still being usable. 
So let me hang this guy on here. Then let's continue on our journey here. So okay, gotta get to get the next one here. Okay, kind of just reach over. See where he's is at. Okay, this guy's gonna drop shortly. Oh, I thought it would drop. Didn't drop. Interesting, I'm not sure what's holding it. Maybe just the pressure of um, being in this guy, which is good for us. Don't drop yet, that's fine. Okay, we'll put these guys here with the remaining. I hope I got about 14 minutes recording left for today, unfortunately. So let me see what I could do. Make the 14 minutes most valuable. Ha, <laughs> look how it's smashed. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull it all out, which we can. Okay, we're going to do it. Pull it out evenly. Okay, so we're going to do is the black wire is going to be hard to make a little slash, right? Or marking. So, but we'll see what we can do. All right, so we're going to do it. We're going to designate. I think we can designate. So the, all the left wire here, we're just going to color it black like this. You guys see that? Now I'm going to put in two different areas just to make sure we got the same one here. This black wire here, we're going to have to look for a little different glist of black, right? Even though it kind of blends in. Okay. Now, there we go. All right, so this will be our indicator which color wires from which side. Same with our black one. Now before we rub them together, let's just let it <laughs> air out a little bit because we don't want the permanent marker to rub on these three non ones, right? So this is pretty much our left one right here. As soon as it gets, you can see a little bit of the gliss on the black one. So it's not going to be a solid black. But these three wires are coming from our left hand side. So we'll know which wire is which, so when we tap it, we'll tap it accordingly. That's pretty much, we'll drag it in there and we'll be able to see from the other side. And then we can split the wires off correctly. In the meantime here, let's go ahead and consider how we're going to mount this, how we're going to hide the wires and everything like that and where we're going to tap it to. So let's go ahead and look for the tapping wire area. It's not that hard. Uh, so we got this guy here. Well, this is our main wire. I don't really want to move him around a lot. And then we got this far left one here. Okay. And then we got the far right here. These are his turn signal here. So we're going to tap into these guys' wire here. I'm not sure which one's going to get the black one, which one's going to get the green one. I would assume maybe we can take the negative to the ground right here and then the red wire to the orange one in here. Now on this side can be different. Well, same thing. The green wire is going to be here. Then we got our ground wire here. You know what's funny is we can actually tie the whole ground wire all together right here. Except whatever I'm splitting here by figuring, you know what, let's just use the T-clamp appropriately. So let's take out a look at that T-clamp in a little bit here. Try and get an idea how we're going to siphon this. Siphon this nicely and into get this guy air out first. Then we'll separate once we get in there. So here's our T-clamp. I call it T-clamp. Might be called another name. These guys right here. That's what we use to pretty much tap our voltmeter gauge there. So what we're going to do is pretty simple. We're going to open this up to be able to clamp these guys here. This will up, and then we're going to bring the small wires inside here. And they will fit there. And these guys will fit here, the big ones. So there should be no problem ask here there. And we'll tee it off like that. So. These guys, this guy will get a clamp here to tap into it. I might want to shrug this guy's sleeve back a little bit because we need a little bit more slack from him, but it doesn't seem like he's allowing me to. So do the best I can with this. Now I have to decide which one's going to go. Okay, so the very top one, the very bottom ones are ground, which is fine. We'll agree to that then. Then we'll clamp it. So we'll use the bottom as ground. There we go. This will be inserted shortly here now. This will save us from having to solder two different joints. There we go. This looks good. So our ground wire is going to be our lower wire. Which our lower wire is going to be the top left hand right here. So we're going to open it up. 
and we're gonna see where that lush is full. So we're just gonna, oh, sorry. You guys see here? They're nice, right? We're just gonna clamp it. Let's see if I can clamp it by hand. No, I can't, this thing is strong. Okay, so let me go ahead and grab something and clamp it. Maybe needle nose plier will do it too, or something that hopefully doesn't break. So we'll clamp the connections here, and this is gonna be hanging onto our guy there. See there? Very thick wires though. Should allow us to clamp. Maybe get a little bit more in there, I guess. There we go. Almost. Harder than I thought. There we go. You hear it kind of snap a little bit. That is tight. Nice. Look at that. Good connections there. And then we'll worry about getting the two wires here and we're done. So we got one on this side. We'll get another one on the other side of that. And we're good there. And the brake lights. Seems like it's probably one of the, the brake lights. Probably this yellow wire here. And also a ground wire too. If we really wanted to connect the blue wire to have it also as a sort of a, I don't know what you call it, a flashing light, we could have tapped the blue wire into this yellow wire here. That's a possibility. In fact, um, we'll do a test before we start doing that. But let's go ahead and get ready to clamp this guy as well. Have him also have a clamp. So he's ready to go. Let's see how we're going to do this. Our ground wire is going to be in the middle which is going to fall on the right hand side. Now how are these guys going to go? Hopefully they don't twist awkwardly, right? I'm trying to make sure I just kind of sit them, see which way they're going to tilt. Can't really tell. But I know I, can, I want to go from the inside. So if I'm going from the inside, it's going to be coming like this either way. So we're going to clamp. All right, so there we go. All right, there we go. <clears throat> there we go. Very, very, so there we go. It's clamped in there. Also helps this guy reinforce too, so they stay together. Oh, don't want to close this guy yet. Darn it, just a little bit push and he's already closed. All right, gotta get him open back. These guys are pretty hard to open too. There we go, got one side I guess. Gotta get the other side. Did not want to smack this guy closed yet. This calls for that little screwdriver again. Okay, where are you? That little screwdriver sure helped us a lot. And you can do the pick one too. But preferably, let's try to get that little screwdriver. He's somewhere in here. Because I remember I was putting him in here unless he dropped in. There he is. Oh, no, that's not him. Fooled us. This was our old one here, which I think was sort of placing him out. This was one too, but let's put this guy old one back. This one's more complete. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy back open. There's one. There we go. All right, leave him open. <laughs> now you could break this little round circle here or cut it out to expand it more. But we're leaving them open because we need to get to that side. Okay, let's go ahead and pull these guys here now that we see the, the bars and they're not going to rub on these guys to transfer since these guys don't have any. Okay, so we'll know which one's right, which one's left. So let me go back in there. there. Pull these guys. 
Should be much a pretty easy clamp down job. Okay, so I'm gonna go and pull. Let's just pull this guy first. Gotta bring him out in the bout. Okay, so there we go. I, I want to make sure they're even like this when we start mounting them. I hate for their wires to go everywhere. They'll be pressed on like this and they'll be going. That one right there. I'm going to see which one is our left and which one's our right. I can tell now because we marked them. See if I can see it. Try to pull them and scatter them here. There it goes. Okay, I found our left black wire. Just need the, our left blue wire here. Find it shortly. There we go. I found our blue wire and I found there it goes. I found our three. There it is. This is our left. This is our right. How we could tell again we marked them remember so there you guys can see it the little marking there there are three amigos one two three look at the markings easy now and i can also tug it watch i'll tug the red wire you'll see it come in see i'll tug the blue wire you'll see it come in there it goes see I'm straightening them out and i'll tug the black wire you'll see it come in Oh, sorry, that was the red wire. <laughs> Let me take the black wire. There you go, see that? It's tight now on this side. And then we can uh, tug the other blue wire here. Kind of keep them, keep them in line here, not crisscross each other. Let me see if I can tug them evenly. So that one's too hard to resolve. Now they're too tight in there. If you look at it, uh, I'm putting pressure on these guys. So I'm gonna do is try to pull them out evenly. Maybe about an inch here. There we go. That way, they, we can put the screw on them and then tighten them down. Let's see how they'll look. Yeah, gotta get them in, get them out. Sort of like that, I guess. Make sure they have enough slack to come around. So we'll have to tug them out a little bit like this. Let's go on, give these guys a good tug too. And I'm not sure why my camera's cutting down, but I had three minutes, 40 seconds. So what I'm doing is just measuring the slack right now, how much I need. So if you guys can see here, I'm just gonna tilt it to the top just to make sure I have enough slack for everything. And then we're gonna cut it accordingly. I mean, it's better. it looks like we're not gonna use a little bit left over, just a little bit slightly. But it's still not enough. I don't want to undercut it because you know what I mean? If you undercut it, then you, there's no going back. So if you look at it, this is pretty much a safe bet here to cut it right here. So we're going to have this much slack left. So this is for the left hand side for sure because you can see all those little permanent marker. Like there, there's one there. The black one's hard to tell, but there is one on the black one as well. You see them like a, a glistering mark somewhere. Might be lower bottom. But the blue one here, we marked them. There you go. He's right there. See that? So the black one might be somewhere around there too. Want we'll make sure this is the same black one because if it's not, then we're gonna be doing a lot more extra work. Uh, it'll still be fine because it's T off the other one, so this is probably the longest length anyway. But I'm trying to find that glister mark on the black one, and I'm not seeing it yet. But I know these two are it too. Hmm. This one doesn't have it. Maybe it's the other black one. Let me go ahead and drag that other black one out here. Oh, wow, it's actually this black one here. I got the wrong black one. Lucky us. <laughs> Double check. Safe and sorry. So let's put this guy back. He's he's for the right-hand side. What a traitor. He tried to blend in with us. 
All right, so here we go. You can see here he has a little gliss of black right there on him. That's from the permanent marker. So you can see there, little gliss of black. I'm not sure you guys can see that. So he's not all the way black. Okay, so I got, okay, so let's do the measurement. We're gonna line this guy up. We're gonna give him the same length as this guy would have. We're gonna even go like this way, just to make sure. I mean, I know there's gonna be some extra slack, but there we go. So we're gonna cut it like right here, just to make sure. And you know, who knows where these guys go, right? These guys are pressed anyway. All right, so anyway, with this one here, it's very simple. Now we're just gonna cut this off like this cleanly. And we're not gonna do anything with the blue wire, so we're fine. And I don't think we even actually have to even spice these guys open at all. Once we put them in there, I think this guy bites into it. So the ground wire is gonna be more toward, I guess in this case here, the green wire here. And then the red wire is gonna be in this side. So the green, black wire is gonna be this side, the black, gray wire is gonna be in this side. And you'll see a little bit of it works accordingly as we said it would, okay. So what you do is just feed it through the hole here. And we are all set. <laughs> So let me try straighten this out here. I know I'm kind of crisscrossing them a little bit. I'll even try my best to do it underneath here nicely. We won't crisscross anyone. But this is it. Okay, let's go ahead and make pull. Then try to make sure, not pull it, but align the gray and black wire so it won't crisscross. Okay, so it's not gonna crisscross like this. So this is it. Okay, so let's do it. So we're gonna put the red wire here and we're gonna put the black wire here. Okay, again, we're not even spicing it. We don't have to, because this thing is gonna bite into the, well, supposedly, it's gonna bite into the insulator. Maybe, I think spicing it might be a bad thing. All right, then we can go and clamp down on it. Hopefully it clamps down. Okay, it's buying the wire, so it's coarse. Okay, it allows me to record for one more minute. So I just want to show you how we did it. We got the T on there right here. You see that? The black and white. I mean, the black and red wire. This guy has it too. So let's check it out. Let's turn on our keys. And let's hit our signal. Oh, no. It's not lighting up. Oh, there it is. Look. <laughs> it worked. Sorry, it's hard to tell, right? Or no, it's not working. This one's not working. Oh, the reflection has actually made me full, or is it? Uh, let's see. Turn the other way. This guy's not working either, is he? Or, can't tell. Normally I could tell, but it's not working. All right, so we tried. So it might be not good contact. Maybe, the, uh, I guess those wires didn't, didn't chomp up enough for us, so we might have to actually spice them. So I'll go and open them back up and spice them. But I figured the other wire is already in. Hmm. All right, gave me nine more seconds. Here you guys go. Bam. Okay. Bam. It's done. It's working.